Um, so welcome and uh, and thank you uh, everyone. Thank you, Sebastian. I'm really excited to be here and even more so to begin working with uh, maybe some of you in the, in the coming weeks um, to learn about you know all the cool projects that are being built on our weave. Um, and you know it's uh, it's really, really cool stuff. So excited to be here. Um, so who who am I? Um, I'm a uh, I'm a five time um, founder myself, having built companies in uh, clean tech, AI, um, fintech and education. Um, also a developer, but a total hack compared to uh, a lot of the people in the Arweave ecosystem. Um, but I, uh, yeah, in my spare time, I, I love coaching startups. I've worked with hundreds of companies across five continents, lived on most of them, and uh, usually do design and product work with uh, with awesome groups like Arcadis, Techstars, um, the Founder Institute, and, uh, and now Arweave. Um, so, I guess I'm assuming that many people in the audience here have, have built decks before. Um, my aim today is to lead you on sort of a thought exercise. Uh, most of the stuff you'll already know, uh, it's so great, but I invite you to spend sort of the next uh, 10 minutes or so checking in and asking yourself if when you're building decks, if you are actually employing the basics, because great decks are are sort of fundamentally simple. You know, you've already done the hard stuff, presumably you've You've built awesome products. You know, you, you may have started to assemble some diverse teams. Um, you're solving complex problems, and this is sort of about threading those together to create, you know, a creative hook to showcase what you've um, been working to showcase your product and and that it's working. Um, so, in, in Sebastian's words, you're not selling the dream anymore. In this case, it's ultimately um, building a deck that supports or frames your pitch uh, in helping you achieve your ultimate goal, which is, yeah, as Sebastian mentioned, you know, it's a, it's getting an in more in-depth conversation with um, with whoever your audience is. Um, so in a, in a sea of sort of contradictory methodology about building decks and overlapping advice, it's, it's important to remember that at the end of the day, really, I mean, you're just, you're trying to communicate, right? Um, and that requires, of course, you know, experimentation and patience as you find out what works, um, flexibility and context as you understand how to best communicate to different audiences and to achieve that, that ultimate goal, which is that follow-up meeting. Um, a great way I like to think about this is that a confused mind says no. <laughs> so whether they're customers or investors, you know, that's, that's what you want to stay away from, obviously. Um, so the first sort of question, and this might be the most important takeaway from my side today to build on uh, the, the ones that Sebastian left you with, are, are that to ask yourself what kind of a deck it is you're building. Um, are you building a customer deck? Are you building an investor deck? Is it a product one? Is it sales? Um, and this matters so much, and, and you really need to be careful here because the ingredients are very different. Um, there's a lot of nuance, obviously, and you will lose opportunities uh, it, potentially if you don't get this right. So, on a basic, I, I was going to make this a little more interactive, but on Crowdcast, I'll just I'll just sort of spin through. I, I'm just uh, on sort of a, a problem solution kind of landscape. Um, I mean, for customers, fundamentally, they're they're often very knowledgeable about the problem, right? Um, you know, you're speaking you're speaking sort of to them, and on a solution angle, I mean, they're personally interested in the solution. Uh, presumably they may want to actually use the product themselves right and rather conversely it's it is possible that investors may not be aware of the problem at all or more likely they are aware of it but they can't actually relate to it on a personal level um, necessarily so they're interested in the solution as well but but only sort of as a business they're interested in can this solution be um, a solid foundation on which to build a large and successful business um, so yes, starting to think about what will go in a little JavaScript uh, joke for the for the the developers. <laughs> I hope my JavaScript's right there. I just spun that up this morning. Um, but yeah, it's basically it's segmenting this right at the outset. It's deciding which type of um, which type of deck am I building. So customer decks. Um, Building on that, customer decks are about them. As you're talking about a problem that they can really resonate with, right? It's about it's about how it can help them personally. And so for these decks, I find it's it's very useful to really sit in the problem um, and show how your solution sort of understands that problem. How is it, whether it's cheaper, faster, better? Um, and yeah, I, I would 100% agree, you know, a product demo here is is ideal. Um, and needless to say, <laughs> trying to get that humming as best before you go live uh, is, is ideal. Um, 
but yeah, it's it's showing them um, it's showing them results here. Uh, how people use your and, and traction in this case is really um, showing how people are using uh your product to help themselves not really you know for traction for customer decks they're not really interested in money necessarily they're they're interested in traction in so far as um how are people using this to solve problems how are these people like me and actually um overcoming issues and challenges and this is how in this case i would also say um and this is maybe a contentious point but um i, I would argue that i think jargon may build credibility here a little bit and this is again specifically on the customer side because um, it shows that you can, or you're connecting with them on a more personal level. You're speaking their language essentially. Um, and on the flip side, I would say, you know, investor decks definitely no jargon, no marketing language. I think it's best practice to probably assume, you know, they they probably don't know anything about your business. Um, and yes, yeah, so they're trying to discern ultimately yeah, what you do, how big the opportunity is, your revenue model, what you see that others don't, et cetera. But traction here is, of course, about the numbers, about the growth, about the revenue. Um, and we'll look at uh, we'll start looking at an example um, towards the end. Um, Michael Seibel from uh, from Y Combinator does uh, uses this example, and I I, I think it's a great example. Um, he says if you're pitching Google um, and you say you know as a pitch Google organizes the world's information, um, he argues it's, this doesn't actually tell investors anything if they don't already know what Google is. So. Uh, if you suspend your sort of disbelief and pretend you don't know what it is, a much better pitch for it would be you go to our website, you type what you want to know in a box, and we report it in an ordered list that we think will help. And what makes us different is that those websites are ranked by how other websites link to them, so the results are way more relevant. Um, and this might seem obvious, but it's so easy to forget. You know, By being in the trenches, building your business, the chances are you've normalized the language and assumptions. Um, that you're making and likely taken some knowledge in the space as a given. Um, and of course, the, you know, there is a caveat here. You know, if you're pitching to an investor who is also a domain expert, then, you know, speaking their language is, is an asset. But generally speaking, um, they should still appreciate, you know, having uh, a concept communicated clearly and in playing language. And, and it may actually uh, be refreshing for them, too. Um, so to dive one layer even deeper on this, I mean, if, if you really feel like going for it, it's worthwhile noting that, you know, there's, is this asking yourself, is it a presentation or a follow-up? Um, you know, regardless of if it's a customer investor deck, um, rarely will you use the same one, right? So for a presentation deck, you know, I, I, I believe that, um, or I've had most success with keeping these very, very minimal, very simple, very stripped down to the bones. Um, and they're there to sort of support what you're saying. No one's reading, you know, a long slide. For more than a few words um, or sentence at most, they're, they're of course a way more visual, and ultimately they're the, to support the speaker. Um, you know, your job's to to communicate the 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 company effectively so that they want to get that next meeting, right? So, follow up decks, on the other hand, you know, they need way more information. They've been filtered for someone who already is interested, um, so they're meant to be read. And here you can you know add more information. Um, so that was a, a little sort of bit high level stuff on on sort of organizational uh, design and kind of how you sort of think about it. Um, I like to use uh, a mentor once told me um, back at China Accelerator in uh, in Shanghai. Um, and and bear with me here on this. Um, he said that no matter who you're pitching, um, everyone in the room. And if if any of you are familiar with Star Trek. Uh, that's great. If not, <laughs> I might lose you and my job's here to not do that. So, so hopefully uh, with any luck, I keep you with me. Um, but he said that everyone in the audience is, um, regardless of the audience, everyone will be at least one of these four people. So Kirk, Spock, um, uh, Scotty, and McCoy. Um, and the Kirk is sort of the vision person, right? The, the person that has the the sort of the grand sort of overarching, they can see the sort of way down the product roadmap and and kind of what it will end up doing for people. Spock is sort of the numbers guy. Um, you know, for in a customer case, it's, you know, how much is this cost? How much is this going to save me for an investor? You know, how big is the market? And what, what's your current growth rate? That sort of thing. The Scotty is the sort of nuts and bolts, the third guy. Um, that's kind of how does the product work, really diving into that if you're on a customer facing deck. And if you're on an investor side, you know, it's more, um, 
how does the revenue model work? Sort of what are the what is the machine of the business model actually look like? Um, and then finally, there's McCoy, who's sort of the human um, who wants to sort of see how this impacts people. Um, and interestingly, this analogy actually often works for founding teams as well. You know, there's the CEO, the, the Kirk, the Spock is sort of this, the CTO, so to speak. The um, COO is kind of the, the, the Scotty, the nuts and bolts guy, and then the, the product guy is the, is the fourth one. So the argument is just that if, regardless of the ingredients that, you know, uh, way back up when I was showing you sort of what was in the Kawasaki, the 500 startups pitches, um, regardless of who's sort of what the ingredients are on paper, um, all the people are going to be one of these four. So as long as you sort of touch on all these notes, um, you're kind of guaranteeing yourself to resonate with everyone in the audience. Um, some notes on design. I mean, I won't go into some specific design or visual elements today because, you know, those will largely be specific to your brand, uh, your voice, you know, your, your, your aesthetic, and essentially it will be unique to you. There's, there's obviously no right or wrong way here, but I mean, aside from a couple obvious things, you know, less text, readable text, obviously proofread. Um, is your file shareable? How large is the PDF? You know, is it going to get, is it going to destroy someone's inbox and they can't open it? Um, things like that. Are, are pictures rendering? Are GIFs rendering? Um, if you're sharing on, you know, Google or permissions set, you know, is the video accessible if there's an embed? Um, and I find it, you know, super useful to use something like Google Slides if you're collaborating at the beginning. Um, if you, yeah, I, I think this is sort of a really important thing from a design perspective. Um, I mean, I don't know if any of you have ever built a house. Uh, I have, but um, if you think, you know, you don't start painting before you've built a foundation, you've framed the walls and hung the beams and put up drywall. So, I mean, in other words, don't start decorating before you know it's something you need to decorate. I've worked with you know countless founders who, who make the mistake of, and myself many, many times early on, of over committing to a slide. Um, and you'll end up spending hours on a slide that you may not need, or, or even worse, suffer from a bias that you do need it now because you think it looks great. You've invested a lot of time with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, be, I would say like be lean with your time here. Save yourself, uh, don't do what this pencil's doing. Uh, save yourself some extra work by nailing the script and the flow first, keeping it super low fidelity. Um, and then building on it from there. So um, if you don't remember anything of what I've been just rattling on about, I think that the two sort of most important takeaways from my end would be to leave you with are that a confused mind says, no, really focus on is the message coming through of what I'm ultimately trying to communicate and is it gonna achieve the goal that I want, which is that meeting um, and to know your audience because it, it plays massively into that. Um, I wanted to, uh, I mean, let's let's pretend I was gonna make this sort of um, more interactive, but um, uh, let's pretend that we agree with everything I just said and that Sebastian says. And I was thinking um, about sort of going through this company, uh, Lulai from Techstars has been kind enough to donate their work to science <laughs> as we beat it up together. Um, but uh, yeah, so I was gonna sort of go through this as sort of a, a case study kind of thing. Um, you know, I think, and I'm just looking at it this morning, so I'm kind of going through it for the first time with you all. Um, I mean, I would say, I think, you know, some of the designs there, I like the consistency that carries throughout in terms of color schemes that, uh, you know, I think being consistent with your design right up front is, is a good rule. You know, you can see that at the bottom, there's the logo, the bottom right, um, but that, you know, not on all the pages. So that's, uh, that kind of, that consistency is pretty important, I think. Um, margins here, uh, margins, I mean, obviously there's way too much text. Actually, I think it probably, uh, you know, if, if anyone feels like jumping, throwing comments in as we look through here, I'd be happy to sort of riff on those a little bit um, as we go through, um, if I see them in time. But yeah, and, and feel free as well, Sebastian, to jump in on uh, any comments with, with the deck as we sort of go through it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think, uh, sorry, yeah, go ahead, said, were you gonna? I just said, will do. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I think, I mean, too much text for sure, uh, right up front. Um, you know, I think, again, if this is a presentation deck, there's there's no way they can read that and listen to you at the same time. And if you have, you know, one minute or two minutes, this is this is supposed to just be the bare bones takeaway of this slide. Um, I thought I heard it chiming. Um, the team, I mean, I think I think margins here need uh, to be sort of consistent throughout. You know, this this is great here, and then sort of it, um, we see it creeping right up to the edge there. Um, I think um, I can certainly see the first thing building or circling back on my Star Trek uh, kind of roundabout Star Trek analogy. I mean, that's kind of one of the first things I I look for is does it have does it communicate to all the types of brains that will be in the audience? You know, does it have um, it, it certainly has the McCoy, the last person um, here. Where where was it? Um, get the sleep and and get the sleep your baby and family needs. I mean that really communicates on a human level. Like that's very understandable. Um, but I would say you know this is probably too much here. Um, another thing I'm just seeing now is this sort of color comes out of nowhere and then it's. There's three, um, the map is kind of different on all three. So I, again, it's just, I think, a consistency, a consistency note on a design point. Um, and then the text are, are kind of my main upfront things. Uh, does anyone have any thoughts so far on that? Or Sebastian? Uh, or? I don't want to have too yeah, much no. awkward. And video conferencing silence but. <laughs> um, i think that scrolling through the through the comments here i don't think we have any questions so far but just for the audience to remember um you can always um either on discord or in town square you can always um ask some questions and be happy to, to address those later one of the questions that comes up super super often after these presentations is are these decks going to be available and yes we're we're going to share these uh, two decks uh, with everyone, so that you can go uh, over them uh, in your own time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, happy to happy to share, and also to um, at the end here leave my my uh, contact. And if anyone has any questions on sort of their decks or any follow up questions on on this, I'd be happy to uh, be happy to chat there. Um, but yeah, I think just going back to, I mean, I think it's it's mainly like too much text. I mean, it's hard to know. You, you kind of get what it's about. Um, but th this is pretty much how much people are going to be looking at it, right? Like as fast as I'm yeah. going through it right now. So that's about how much time you have, <laughs> which means obviously, you know, more than a sentence is crazy. Um, and, and if they're just sort of taking away just like bite-sized snapshots um, visually, then um, you know, it's even more important to have that consistency, be able to know what to expect sort of on the next slide and have those design, um, sorry, my Slack's pinging, and have those uh, design elements carry through. Um, but that's sort of, that's more or less what I what I had to share today. And I think, uh, again, I'm, I'm happy to chat after. And um, I was trying to think back to craft a good landing, <laughs> Sebastian, after your talk, it's a, uh, I was Lucas. This was uh, some high-level notes on uh, on building a great deck um, from an organizational structure, uh, and uh, yeah, I'd be happy to get in touch afterwards.